If you want to do really great woodwork, one thing that you've really, really got to understand is wood grain. So in this video, we're going to take a deep dive into wood grain. I'm going to tell you what it is, where it comes from, and how will it affect your woodworking. Okay, so you're probably wondering, what is wood grain? These beautiful patterns you see down the timber. I've never wondered, where do all these lines come from? What are they and what are they there for? So what wood grain basically is, is when you've got a tree like this and you've got your annual rings here, which you can see on the end of the uh, tree, what happens is when the tree is cut up into planks, they cut through the tree that way and that creates these beautiful patterns you see on your timber. So because paper comes from timber, it's quite easy to understand it a bit more if I demonstrate with a piece of paper. If you get paper like this, uh, you can't see it on paper, but there is a grain in paper. Quite straight, like that. But if you try and rip it the other way, it will go all over the place, like that. And that's because you're going against the grain. So in timber, if we look at that in timber, if I, if I sort of try and tear this timber that way, it's actually impossible to tear it that way. But if I get the wood and tear it this way, it, as you can see, it does, because that's going with the green. So that's the weaker way. So another example of this is if you get a piece of timber like this, a piece of thin timber, as you can see, the green is running this way down the timber. So if I put it that way, so the green is running across, I can push on that and it is really, really strong. You, you're not gonna break that by hand. But then if I tear the timber round, so the green is running down, you can see it's very weak. You can see quite easy to break the timber because it's going down the green. Now green changes from uh, timber to timber. Uh, sometimes you'll see, this is a piece of hardwood, a piece of ash, and this is very heavy. Now the structure of hardwood is very close grained which means on the end there, you can see it there, it's very close grained. Whereas you get a soft wood and you can see there that there's a, like little holes, little gaps in between the fibers of the timber. And that's because that's a soft wood and that's an hard wood. Now, the closer the fibers you will find, the heavier, the denser the wood is. And you'll also find when you're machining it, when you're making something out of it, you'll get a lot better finish on a close grain timber rather than an open grain timber. That's not to say you can't use soft wood for furniture and things, you can. But what I'm saying is you will get a lot smoother finish on hardwood a lot faster than you will on a soft wood. What do you need to consider when you're making a project? Uh, why does grain matter? What, what do you need to look for when you're making a project? Well, this is a good example. Now, I've got two pieces of wood here. One's got a knot in, in the uh, timber, which is a branch off the tree, basically. It's been cut through. Uh, and as you can see, on the piece of wood without a knot, the grains run down, down, and sometimes they wave a little bit, but they're always running from top to bottom, like that. But when you find you get a knot in the timber, which as I say is a branch that's been cut off, now you can see the disruption around this knot. The rings go round like that. Instead of going down, they're basically coming from the knot, right out and right back to the knot. And here they're, they're sort of following the edge of the knot right round. So it disrupts the grain of the timber. And that's something that you need to think about when you're making a project out of timber look at the grain if you're going to cut a piece of wood then it's always important to look at the grain and just see is that the best way to cut that piece of wood is that the right piece of wood for this project am i better just to you know put that wood on one side and use a different piece uh, because if you're going to cut a joint or you're going to put a groove in it or anything like that if you're going to do anything with the timber it's always important to look at the grain now if I said like I was going to cut through there, straight through that knot, you're going to expect that knot to come out because you've basically cut through it. So things like that. So you'd probably use that piece of timber instead. So when you cut down, there's no knot and you're going to get a nice clean edge. 
If you try and cut down that one through the knot, as I say, the knot's gonna come out, you're gonna end up with a knot hole. Just to demonstrate this, I'm gonna just show you with a chisel. I'm just gonna split this timber and just see what happens. And it'll demonstrate better what how knots affect uh, your weight piece. So as you can see, that has split from top to bottom. It's not perfectly straight, you wouldn't expect it to be, but it's not far off straight down from top to bottom. Now if I try and break this one with the knot in, I'm not gonna go right on the knot, I'm gonna go slack it to the side of the knot, as you can see now. Now can you see that? That's basically followed the green around the knot, like that. And if I try to go through the knot, just for an example, as you can see, it's just, it's made a right mess. It's, the knot's come out of that one, so it's not broke the knot, and it's torn the green, and it's just, it's horrible. It's just really disrupted the uh, split down the wood. So as you can see, if you take a look at that one, as opposed to that one, you can see that that one, the knot has disrupted the actual split of the wood, and this one has pretty much gone straight from top to bottom. So that's something you need to think about when you're doing a wood project. Think about the green and think about what you're gonna do with that piece of wood. Is that green gonna disrupt what you're doing? So if you're gonna cut, say, a half in joint or something like that, is it not gonna drop out or is it gonna be weak because there's, you know, a bad green in it and things like that. So always keep a close eye on your green whenever you're doing uh, any type of woodwork. So I hope that's helped you and uh, give you a little bit more insight into wood green and how wood green is going to affect your project uh, when you make your next project. So if you cancellate your timber, always try and pick a timber with a nice green in it. Uh, if you see some with a really nasty green in, then I'd steer clear of it because it's going to make your project so much easier to do when you've got timber with nice green in it. If you've got any questions about timber or anything else to do with woodwork, please do post them in the comments and I'll do my best to answer them for you. So if you think you've got something from this video, if you're learning from these videos that I'm doing, then please do hit that like and subscribe button, share the videos and take a look at some of the other videos on the channel. Keep woodworking and remember, practice makes perfect and I'll see you a lot on the next one.